I'd make a video about my response to this podcast released by the Rest is Entertainment channel by Richard Osman and Marina Hyde. It's a fantastic channel. They do about two podcasts a week and they're always top notch. They're always gripping. They last about half an hour ish. I'm a bit of a fan. I always tune in. It's always a great listen. It's always well researched. In this particular podcast, now I don't want to play the podcast because there might be copyright issues, but Richard makes the observation as follows, that in the first half of the 1980s, that's the first five years of the 1980s, there was 146 weeks where bands were at number one. In the first half of the 1990s, there was 141 weeks where bands were at number one. In the first half of the 2000s, there were three weeks where bands were at number one. And at the time of releasing the podcast... In that week's top 40, there was not a single band formed this century. Now, we're talking about the UK charts here. This is not the Australian charts. It's not the American charts. But I'm pretty sure you'll find a similar story wherever you go. Now, when I heard this, I nearly fell off my chair because as a musician, been a musician all my life, playing in bands is central to what I'm all about, really. And to discover that bands as such were pretty much no longer relevant to mainstream pop music. My immediate thoughts on this is that this is obviously technology driven. If you were Sting in the 1970s and you wrote a song, the only way you could bring that song into existence was to put a band together and get some guys to play that song and then that brings it into reality. Today you just don't need that because all you need now is a cheap laptop and a bunch of free software that you can download from pretty much anywhere on the internet and off you go. It's definitely a sign of the changing times. Back in the day, recording was really hard. Studios were expensive and just a roll of tape was £200. So you pretty much had to get it right first time. That is, of course, unless you were lucky enough to have a record company to support you and they could bankroll that expense. But of course, most people didn't have that luxury. So as I say, recording was a really difficult process, a difficult, expensive process. And this is where the role of the producer came in, which would help inexperienced bands shape their songs into something palatable for the market. Producer would be someone with much more experience in the studio as an engineer, songwriter and someone dealing with sonics. The role of producer today is almost redundant because bands and artists can sit at home today and record and produce and songwrite and hone their skills almost endlessly in their bedrooms for free. Also, in the 70s, 80s and 90s, what the public got to hear was controlled by gatekeepers. That would be the record companies. Today, within minutes of finishing a tune, you can upload that song to social media for all the world to hear. The downside being is that everyone's doing it. So the playing field, so to speak, is saturated. So standing out from the crowd is more important now than it's ever been. It's always been important, but there's so much more music around now. To be noticed, you really need to be doing something unique and innovative. At one time, it was all played out in the music clubs and the pubs and venues like that. Today, it seems to be more video platforms like YouTube or TikTok. We've all found video clips of bands and artists that we like and then shared those clips on Facebook. And that's how it works these days. So the world has changed. Bands are not a requirement in the production of music anymore. Most large recording studios have closed. They've got no customers, other than for live drums, perhaps. Cheap home recording equipment and, of course, the advance of the digital age means that we can all now have very inexpensive recording setups in our own home. And the quality is very high. There is no barrier to recording your own music. The knock-on effect of that is that music has changed. Virtually everything you hear now is electronic. Literally everything. Everything's in perfect time. Everything's in perfect tune. You hardly ever hear a live drummer. For that matter, you hardly ever hear a live musician. So, is the era of the band over? You can argue about this, but I think it started with Lonnie Donegan in the mid-50s and ended at some fuzzy point in the early 2000s. I would say that's a golden era of music that's now gone, seemingly, forever. I, for one, am gloriously happy to have lived through it. I don't think we'll ever see the likes of Led Zeppelin, Rush, The Beatles, The Stones, 
Joni Mitchell, Simon and Garfunkel, Ricky Lee Jones, James Taylor, Carol King, Genesis, Thin Lizzy, Van Morrison, Pink Floyd, Guns N' Roses, Oasis, Blur, Duran Duran, Massive Attack, Black Sabbath, Metallica, The Eagles, ever again. Though I say The Eagles, country music still seemed to be glorying in the band format, despite the efforts of Beyonce, I must say. But what a time to have lived. So, the question is, can bands be successful again? Well, I think they've got the work cut out. Here are a few things that I believe they're up against. Modern solo artists have a very broad sonic palette to draw from. The scope of modern day music production tools is breathtaking, almost limitless sounds available. A band by its very nature is limited to the palette of the instruments in that band. So to compete, band members have to become sonically much more adventurous and experimental. Secondly, Modern artists can produce music that would be literally impossible to play as a band. There's literally no limit to how you can compose without being limited to the musical limitations of band members. And this is a controversial point, but I think I'm going to say it anyway. And that is, it's hard for bands to sound different given the fact that we've now had, I don't know, 70 years of guitar music. It's hard to come up with new ideas. Many up-and-coming bands tend to sound like the bands that they listen to. And mimicry is not the name of the game, and it never has been, and that's not what record companies are looking for, or even listeners. That's not what listeners are looking for. So, are record labels signing bands? Well, I don't have the answer to that question, but I would guess that's probably not. I think record labels basically follow trends, and the trend at the moment is definitely not signing bands. So if you want to get signed by a record label you're going to have to come up with a pretty good reason for them to sign you. I think where this game is played out is not in clubs and venues, but on social media, online video formats. So if I was starting out, I would try and find a permanent space where I could record music and video and work and practice that skill. The last time I took a flight, I was in the waiting area at the gate just prior to getting on the plane. And I looked up from my book and every single person in that waiting room was staring at their phone. Everyone. There's an insatiable demand for interesting media and it's up to you to fill that void. If you can't fill it, you will fail. If you can, it might open some doors. At the end of the day, I believe there is a compelling argument for record companies to sign bands. Just look at the frenzy over Oasis tickets for their upcoming reunion tour. What that shows is there's a staggering amount of money on the table. Successful bands are not just bands, but they're social movements and they reflect the times they live in. They also have longevity and can create revenue long into the future. Just look at the Stones or the Eagles. How do you do that? If I could answer that, I'd be doing it myself. But I feel a group of guys or girls with guitars is better suited to pull that off than any single artist in a bedroom, Billie Eilish excluded. Very few will get signed, so don't spare the horses. And remember, the music business is changing constantly. There may be no bands in the charts today, but it does not rule it out for the future. The future is yours to make. When Nirvana came along, everything changed overnight and not a single person saw that coming. Everything that came before Nirvana was swept away. And there are many sorry before and after Nirvana stories. It can happen again. I absolutely believe that. You may even see that as an opportunity. If I can offer any advice, it would be this. Don't push boulders up hills. When you get it right, all the doors will open. I've seen it many, many times. Keep working on the music and get it right. Thank you for listening. If you have any thoughts or ideas, please leave them in the comments. This is the kind of stuff that keeps me awake at night. So once again, thank you for listening. And from Wonji Wonji in New South Wales, Australia, see you next time.